Everybody loves you because you're not competition. When you become competition, the people start, wait, hold on, wait, wait. Pull up in a monster automobile gangster with a bad bitch that came from Sri Lanka. Yeah, I'm in a tanga, color a Willy Wonka. What's up guys, it's your girl Alexis Makaya and I'm back with another video. This video is long overdue, well not really long overdue, actually it's kind of fast. So um, today as you can see from the title, thumbnail, whatever, today we will be talking about my rest reduction journey, recovery, and my personal experience with me and aesthetics because that's who I went to. I'm um, going to go over the prices, my doctors, things and that such, reminding you this is my personal experience. Like I looked at the reviews for me as that it's not every doctor is hitting on what my doctor is hitting on. So just be careful who you choose and you know, make sure you do your research, look at reviews, go on TikTok, do what you gotta do, but this is my personal experience. So I say that to say this. Let's get into this new moments. So I made um some notes on my phone, so you know, don't be, don't be like she on her phone. I made a whole um, thing. So I don't know if I want to go over the prices and things first. I'll probably do that later in the video. But first, I'm gonna go over um, my doctor and where I went, how many CCs I got, and things and that such. So and like a little backstory. So backstory, I was originally a 32B and I had flat chested like. 32B, I would insert a picture right here because a lot of people, when I tell them I didn't have boobs, be like, yes, you didn't have boobs. When I wore a bra, I had boobs, but this is not, this is not titties. Like, I had a lot of chest. I'm not going to say I was just no boobs, but I was flat chested. Anyway, so I went from a 32B and I got my first surgery um, two years ago and I went up to a 388cc. Um, the doctor did not give me an option for a lift. Um... I personally feel like I should have got a lift and she didn't offer that to me she didn't go over it this is not the same place this is not me at aesthetics this was um Jolie's she did do a bad job because my boots were very realistic but I paid for a breast lift with a, a breast augmentation with a lift um I left off the table with double D's and saggy one so like when I first got them done they were sitting up or whatever they were just big and hard-headed I never wore my bra I'm thinking oh I got boobs I got boobs I got boobs and they just got so saggy and low and then also I would insert a clip because this is a very transparent video they got so saggy and low that it was just terrible and very um i felt like i had three kids i had, felt like i had two kids and i'm just 22 and i'm just like this is not how i want my boobs to look and i hated it i caught myself a pee all the time and i don't care what no one says they say you get plastic surgery because you have insecurities and it's crazy my family my sisters my day one friends they would tell you with my little boobs i would insert videos for you guys i was very confident with my little boobs i did not get actually it was a spare in the moment like it's like i wanted my boobs done but it wasn't no pressure if i didn't get it done so when i did get my double d's that's when it became an insecurity for me so that's when i was like oh my gosh i was like every day i get dressed i would downplay my body like i look like a pee oh my gosh my boobs are too big and people are like no you don't no you don't but guys you know when you wear certain stuff and it's crazy now that I got this new, my new boobs, people are like, oh my God, I did not know it was that bad because it was really bad. But anyways, that's a little backstory. So um, I went to Mia Aesthetics. My doctor is Dr. Rice. She was so sweet, so loving. Um, I'm going to discuss the pros and cons of my uh, boob recovery uh, reduction. So the pros, communication. A lot of people were saying that they didn't have communication or whatever before, but I I love looking at plastic surgery videos and like people like TikToks or whatever like that. And to say that their communication was so top tier, it's top tier. Like they communicated before, like with my blood work, with my blood work, my ACL. I had been drinking for Memorial Day weekend. It was like, hey, we need you clear. Hey, and mind you, I booked my surgery a day, a month before my day so a lot of people plan a year ahead it's something i didn't know i wanted to do spare in the moment i'm such a live life person is i wanted them out like i wanted to, i didn't i hated them so 
um great communication they were we were talking they would call me and i know a lot of times people say well and it's true when you get your body done booty titties whatever they communicate so good until they get that money and then they disappear one thing i can say after my surgery they gave me four post-op visits and i never experienced this before four post-op visits come in check out which i didn't go to all of them because i did not stay in miami um i do not live there so i'm not gonna be booking no airbnb just because we'll post-op like that's ridiculous no so i went to two and that's it and um they communicated with me even like last week they called me and it was like hey how are you liking your results and i told them the truth um i told them i didn't know if I like my results or not, it's because when I went to my post-op, I told the doctor, this is not the size I wanted. So the doctor gave me a 300 cc, um, which is probably a full C. Um, I went from a double D to a full C, and this is not the size I wanted. And it's crazy, because when you go under the knife, you can't, you really don't know what they're putting in your body. You don't know if your doctor is actually the one working on you. You don't know, it's very scary. And that's why I just say, you gotta pray about things like this, because I did, I was frustrated because I told her I wanted small perky boobs. Like, I, she was going to take my boobs out and not put anything back in them. But due to the loose skin that I know I would have received in prior experience from my friend, I didn't want to be that person with just flabby boobs. Like, like this is not that. So I wanted some implants, but I wanted 225, 230, really small. She gave me 300, y'all. So I was like really pissed. But. I'm about to drink my margarita on the rock, rock, rock. It's gonna get stuck all around that room, 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 room. <laughs> but yeah, so I feel like that part was really bad for me. But also back to the call, he was just like, okay, so I talked to, you know, supervisors or whatever. And they was just like, in three months, if you don't like, if your boobs don't get smaller, which she said they will get smaller, just swollen right now. If they don't get smaller, and still be perky you can get a revision but the only con to that is who wants to go through the process because this process was one of the worst process i ever experienced in my life like i pain level was terrible for me because for one the doctors not the, not my doctor but the people who work for the doctor she wrote our prescription they didn't give me pain medicine they literally left me hanging like i went to walgreens to pick up which they were super nice like <laughs> they let me pick up my prescription before the surgery a lot of plastic surgeons or places they don't let you get your medicine to after you after your caregiver picks you up which is worse because you want to go straight home instead of riding around trying to get medicine and wait on it so i felt like that was really good that they did that but also when i went to pick up my um you know nausea medicine um they gave me like blood blood clot to prevent blood clot medicine then they that was it i was like where the percocets baby where's the drugs baby where's the where's the where's the where's the what's going on what's going on they was like shit my um friend was like they didn't prescribe you it i was like oh hell no like this is not that called them they was like hey just get tylenol um that will work so literally i went through this paint off of tylenol the same tylenol i use for my cramps like so it was very like if you go watch my boob journey i was very in pain but i was up moving still but i still wasn't like lifting it took literally this is my third week this is a literally third week boob update and i literally still feel sore <laughs> like i still i can move my arms i still like i just was able to wash under my arms literally two days ago like I used to wash under like this, now I can lift my arms up literally three weeks in this thing. Like, that's crazy. So, um, doctor was super friendly, very comfortable. Um, everything flows. So, like, people know in Miami, very ghetto, very unorganized. Now, no, nah, nah, let me not say it wasn't completely organized as in community like their communication was good, but then it wasn't. So, for example, I went through something where it was a flood. And they switch pharmacy, they switch locations, didn't tell me. I had to drive, I drove an hour to go to my post, my pre-op for it to be closed. 
and then the people there didn't speak English so it was very hard to communicate with them after 30 minutes it was like oh we are at another location and then when I found the new location it was too late so I had to do my pre-op the same day as my surgery which is kind of why I kind of feel upset about my boots I felt like I was rushed like I told her my size but she really would have understood how serious I was if I had a small boots I just felt like the day before would have been better and I could have actually like looked at my boobs and picked out which implant I want. I didn't have that option. So um, I feel like they could have communicated better with that. Um, they did not send emails saying that they rescheduled for the flood. So my experience is different from your experience. So it might not even be no storm. You get what I'm saying? So like you can't go off my experience. But other than that, it was no long waits. When you walk in, it didn't look like an abortion clinic. They need to bring that back. <laughs> but um it did look like an abortion clinic and it wasn't people just bleeding, sitting around with BBLs. It was it was people, probably like four to six people, which I really liked. It wasn't overcrowded. I didn't feel out of place. And it, they scheduled the timings where you wasn't compacted to just feeling like you're going to get chopped up in a chop body shop. No. Um, it wasn't ghetto. Very professional. Very clean. Um now i'm about to get into the portion of the feedback of my results so like i said i didn't really like my boobs at first i felt like they were too big but also no they were still big but also i feel like they're great um i love my scarring placement she placed it right under my boobs so like if you're looking directly at me you wouldn't see the scarring but if you go under from a view you will see it i also like how tight my boobs are like when i say she pulled the fuck out of my skin she pulled my skin like they don't i don't have the stretch marks that i used to have from the double d's um also i like how they still are perky and my boobs never set this high like even when i first got my other boobs done my collarbone my boobs was down here so it was just like big old boobs down here like not this literally this part started right here and i know you're like no way yes i'm not kidding and i will show you a picture if i can't find one um i try to use scarring cream every night like i've been doing that since i got my um since the tapes have came off i let my tapes the dissolvable tapes stay on for two weeks okay let's talk about scarring treatment so um yeah i started putting scarring cream after my dissolvable dissolve like the, t the tape they tell you to put on after a week after it didn't dissolve it just was coming off or whatever so the places that was lifting i would just slide like uh i think it's metal i think i had i had the cream i got neosporin i have the silicone scar cream the silicone scar tape and i also have um metara something metara whatever like that i can't really think of the um the names or whatever but i would have it in here when i'm talking about it but i've been using the silk you get this all off amazon silicone um tape this is the silicone right after you know to prevent uh infections and burns and for scars i feel like this is not a scar removal but it prevents infections and discomfort then i got this um this has a good amount of reviews on Amazon. So I'm gonna try this. Excuse my nails. <laughs> but I'm gonna try this. But yeah, so so yeah, I had those. I ordered those creams off of Amazon. And I'm sorry if I touch my hair a lot. I'm sorry, y'all. That's just something I do. But I'm trying to get out of it. So I definitely need to be consistent with this. And it's just about discipline, like making sure you, you include this in your shower routine every night. So also the cunts okay not good at contacting a less routine that's what i talked about about them not telling me so meaning their communication is so good that they have a set schedule for everything call her call her call her at the post i'll call her when her next Very routine but when something unexpected like the flood happened they're not good at communication so um okay so also i didn't like about me aesthetics that when i call them it did, it didn't contact me to their actual location it contacted me to a representative so when in the spare of the moment no i can't sit on the phone like i didn't know where to go i was lost in the middle of miami like 
I didn't have no clue. These people did not speak English. Like the workers there, I was just like trying to contact someone at the other location and they contacted me to a representative. Hold on, let me sit my margarita on the rock, rock, rock. So I pray it goes away, but I noticed I have been experiencing, well, I, I have experienced what well, I'm going through it right now. I have numbness right here, so like, let me see if I can feel it. I cannot feel under my arm right here. Like, it was itching one day, and I was itching it, and I felt my hands itching it, but I can't feel it. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's definitely numb under my arms. Um, I hope it goes away. It's been three weeks, so I still can't feel under my arms. I don't know if I, a nerve is hit or why I can't feel like I can feel it don't get me wrong like I feel my hand but I can't feel my hand like I feel the pressure of my hand but I can't feel the fingers of my hand um and there's just a little small patch probably right here and also she did tell me she had to make my um she had this uh I don't know the words the f word something to my to keep my boobs up because I have a natural low a low cup so when she put the implants in they're naturally going to drop so she stitched it or she did something on my sides to make them sit up and I could tell because this side came back from being numb but this side is still numb um very sore very painful experience and when I say painful not necessarily like ow 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 but very discomforting and just sore and sharp and I do get sharp pains out of nowhere um but it's just three weeks in my camera is running hot, so I'm gonna be right back. Sorry guys, so um, when you get your boobs done, they gave you this bra. Ooh, it says 38. I wonder what is a 38. It says I'm a 38 on the, on the thing, but they gave you this bra. Um, I prefer you to, before, you're, before you go, go on Amazon, go on Sheen, go on somewhere and get you a bra like this, a compression bra, workout bra, that you can button or zip up. It's gonna be your best friend. They gave me one bra, but when I went back in for my post stop, I was like, girl, like, can you give me another bra? Because like, y'all charge $50 and like, no, first, I know, me being me, I'm so talkative and just bubbly or whatever. I was like, girl, this, like I had blood seeping through my nipples through this bra. And I was like, what am I supposed to do? I was like, first I was like, when can I take showers? She was like, don't take showers right after, wait a good week, if you can, not a week. Four days if you can, take bird baths or whatever like that, ho baths. <laughs> so I was just like, okay, um, so what are we gonna do about this bra? Because like, do I get another one? I'm thinking I get another one. She was like, no, you you can't get another one. She was like, you know what? Like, I got you, can't say nothing. So like, she literally took it out the package, stuffed it in my back, stuffed it in my um purse or whatever. And I had got two, cause I'm just like, girl, I can't be walking around in no dirty bra in the middle of the airport. Like, what are what like, no, right? So she stuck me one. I just recommended it all, cause I went, I was gonna order me some more because I want my boobs to remain perky. Like I, um, they gave me a tape to put, so I put the bra on and then they put the tape over bra to push the boobs out. Baby, I don't want my boobs pushed out. So I took the tape off and like, no, I want my boobs to remain perky and up. I want them to look plastic and fake, which I know it's not gonna look like this. Like it just, it's still swole. They're still firm. My nipples are, I can't feel my nipples, thank God. And y'all, she also made my nipples smaller. Like I had quarter size nipples, like two quarters. Like after my, I had went from little nipples to like my nipples being like I breastfeed and then they're back little. So I love that. It's just so cute. And I can't wait till they heal. But actually, I still have tape around my nipples. Like, that tape, no matter how much I wash it, no matter, like, when I take a shower, that tape is not going nowhere. And me, baby, I'm keeping it on there because the last thing I need is for my nipple thread or sewing to come loose and get infected. And I'm just not going through that. So so let's talk pricing. Um, I don't want this video, video to be too long and my camera is running hot. So let's talk pricing. So what people don't tell you when you get your boobs done, you gotta pay for your boobs, the flight, the Airbnb, your caregiver, cause I doubt people gonna pay to come take care of you. Your bra, the rental for the car, the food, the blood work, if your insurance doesn't cover it. And a lot of times your insurance is not gonna cover a plastic. 
surgery unless it's like something natural like you had oversized boobs naturally you want to get it taken out but i did this to myself so let's talk about the pricing i wrote everything down Hold on. okay so i have to make a 645 deposit for me aesthetics in general um that's going to yeah. so that deposit in itself is going to go towards your uh boob surgery um i had to pay 175 dollars for blood work to get the labs and things and as such from you can go to like a clinic like um a walk-in clinic just call and say do they do the blood work make sure the labs when they send you the form you print them off that way you can give them to them and see if they do it and i people say go to a hospital but honestly hospitals be doing too much like um i spent eight hundred dollars on my airbnb when you're traveling for your boobs i don't care when, i mean if you like to live luxury and stuff like that that's cool but i mean it's not like i was in a slump so don't get me wrong my place was straight as you can see it was normal but you're going to be there for a week you don't want to be spending two thousand dollars that's not included in your surgery um, a place to stay about two plane tickets round trip for me and my friend which was a thousand um ubers to the airport was 47 and back was 25 let me make sure because i'm gonna add this up at the end uh 25 rental car was 135 checked in bags was 35 um i checked in my bag twice $45 for parking because the place I went to didn't tell me they had a parking garage y'all the parking garage was literally three blocks over from the Airbnb meaning I had to walk like the person take care of me had to walk with our suitcases our groceries everything and then um my initial cost for the surgery I don't want to tell you guys wrong was 64 400 and i thought that was a good deal because a lot of times it's 7500 eight thousand dollars i thought that was a good deal 6400 but how they get you in order to get an implant which i didn't know to the day of the surgery because i didn't go to my pre-op to the day of the surgery she thought i was just getting my boots taken out and i was like no i'm gonna put an implant back in there she was like oh that's gonna be an extra thousand dollars so really i spent 7400 on my um boobs and then I have some stuff written down. I think it was on food, like quick food, like uh, grocery shopping. I spent $80, $85. So like drinks for the place you want drinks. I had to get antibacterial so which I had some from home, but you will have to buy that. Um, groceries like cereal, milk, juices, water, drink a lot of water. You really don't need no juices. We had like, I was drinking like apple juice. Um, cranberry juice things and as such really didn't just water honestly water um and then i got 44 dollars right here i don't know but if i wrote it down then when i spent this so 44 dollars and then like i'm gonna add all this up and tell you the total was i'm gonna add all this up six forty so let's just say I'm going to add up the total and be back. One second. Okay, girls. So, in all, I spent $9,847. That's a whole BBL. That's veneers. Like... I could have got my teeth done. Like, that's crazy. That is crazy to me. I spent that, and that's not even including like the creams outside, cause these are not cheap. This is like twenty dollars. This was damn near thirty dollars. So like, it adds up how much. I probably spent a good. I'm gonna just say ten on uh, my boots because that does not include like when I came back home, having to pay people like. To buy my went about groceries because I can't go anywhere. I gotta pay people for Ubers to get back to my house. Like it's just a lot of stuff was adding up. So I probably spent like a good ten on my boobs. But guys, ooh, that was the rundown on the boobies. 
I'm going to insert clips so you guys could see the vision like from before and after. Um, I now have a long torso. My boobs sit up. I don't look like a pea anymore. Um, I actually love my results to be honest. Um, even though they are still big and I want the small perky look, they're not too big. Like, I could wear tops and not look so top heavy now. Like, when, like, I used to wear, like, if I want to wear turtleneck, I would look like I had, like, freaking broad shoulders. Like, having big boobs make you have broad shoulders. Like, now I still look petite. I still look cute. Like, it just was a lot that people were like, oh, your boobs. And people were telling me not to get my boobs redone only because they said that, um, they said that just leave it alone, like you done did enough. But no, like I don't want to think about it when it comes to my body. I'm gonna spend my money because who's gonna be walking around lopsided titty? And then on top of that, y'all, one of my titties, she told me one of them was a whole inch lower than the other one. So like the first surgeon, she put a whole different size implant, like a whole inch works. Not I know it's supposed to be sisters, not twins, but it was like they wasn't near they, it was just crazy but guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video give this video a big thumbs up i included everything that i experienced what i know my knowledge on it um i hope this video helped you if you are having a surgery up, surgery coming up let me know girl i'm going to give you some encouraging words if you need tips or anything just comment below i will be reading all my comments my doctor was dr Wright. if i didn't mention her before at me aesthetics so yeah it's your girl let's see some kaya like come subscribe for more videos love you and I'm a drink to that. Okay. Everybody loves you because you're not competition. When you become competition, the people start. Wait, hold on, wait, wait. Pull up in a monster automobile gangster with a bad bitch that came from Sri Lanka. Yeah, I'm in a tanga, color a Willy Wonka.